Catherine Cannuli uh, with White Ribbon just around the corner on the 23rd of November and the importance of the day we thought we'd get together and chat all things football. So Catherine, why do we play football? Okay, we play your, for me I, I think I didn't have much of a choice. Um, I grew up in an Italian family. I used to get woken up at all hours in the morning to, to watch Italy play in World Cups and, and Euros. Um, I had two older brothers. Uh, I used to be out in the backyard playing and kicking the ball around and there was no PlayStation or Fortnite back then so I had no choice but to kick, kick a ball around. Um, you know, it's been, been a massive part of my uh, life and it still is. Um, whether I'm playing, I'm watching it and, and I'm a big fan as well of the game. Yeah, brilliant. Much the same for me. Um, my family, my older brother, younger brother, we always used to play football and we backed on to a a soccer field at our local club, so we're there every every afternoon, playing in the backyard, playing, waking up early to watch the Socceroos play, you know, watching that hour highlight show of the Premier League on SBS on a Monday. Um, yeah, just whatever we could do to to watch football and to play. Um, yeah, just lived it and breathed it. So I used to love watching. Um, on, I think it was called on the ball, wasn't it? Yeah, With, uh, like Les Murray that. and Andy and Johnny Warren. And yeah. I remember they used to have the um, the highlights of the Premier League goals. And it was like uh, I had. I got to admit this that when I was young and I was playing for Marconi uh, under eleven boys, I think it was back then. I used to be so excited for my games that I would actually sleep in my full kit the night before. Okay. That's how excited I was. And sometimes my mum would have, I'd actually put my boots on and I'd be that excited about playing the next day. And um, watching that, that show was, was definitely a massive um, pump up before my, my big under 11s game back then. It feels like such a long time ago now. Good memories though, right? Some of the greats of the game. You'll never forget those guys in that show. And, um, yeah, and just what it meant to watch the Socceroos and to watch so many get up early and watch, you know, so many times where we'd go away to Uruguay and something would go wrong qualifying for the World Cup or um, against, against Iran in 97 and all these different games that you would just live and breathe for. Um, even back then when there wasn't so much broadcasting of it, you just wanted more as a kid. You just wanted to see more football um, just because you loved it so much. Well, I grew up, um, majority of my time was spent in, in the back, um, back car park of uh, Marconi, so playing in, in the backfields there. So Marconi for me um, was what sparked my passion, obviously from an Italian background and living out west, Marconi was the, um, you know, the pinnacle of, of football back then. So um, good old uh, Joe used to be the Socceroos kit man also, he was the Marconi kit man and, and good old Joe, our manager here now that looks after all the kit, um, used to see me as a, as a young kid running around Marconi and um, hanging out with the likes of you know, Gary Van Egmont and JP. You know, it's funny how it goes full circle now. You know, I'm working in the game and um, working alongside and, and seeing what JP actually does in our game and Gary Van Egmont is uh, assistant coach of the Matildas. Alan Stagic that used to play for my brother, um, obviously head coach of the Matildas and you know I was such a young kid back then having all these dreams and I've, I'm one of the lucky ones I got to play um, and I also get to now work in the game which is um, something that a lot of people dream to do where they can you know work in football and for me you know I don't I don't classify it as a job because it's something that I love I wake up every morning doing something that, I'm, that I love and that I'm passionate about. Yeah, so with your football I know you were saying you played with the boys in the under 11s and I don't know for you yourself have you ever experienced any kind of gender inequality? Yeah back then um, there was no girls football team so it was either I played with the boys um, or I didn't play or I had to go play all age women. There was no under 12s or under 13s. Uh, when I got to under 13s, unfortunately the association had said that um, now I was obviously getting older and that I couldn't play with the boys anymore. 
and there were some barriers that I had to um, jump over back then. You know, I had to. It was a hurdle for me and with my family. You know, I wanted to play football. I knew already at a young age that I wanted to play for Australia. You know, I knew what my goals were. I knew what I, I knew what I wanted to do. Um, and then as a family, we discussed it. And obviously, growing up in Marconi and being a big part of that club, um, at 13 years old, I went and played for uh, Marconi first grade women. So now a lot of people look at that and say, oh no, these kids are too young. No one would ever think, about, think twice about um, putting a 13 year old girl in, in, first grade, uh, in a first grade squad or a 13 year old boy. But back then there was no other uh, pathways. So that was, that was the only pathway that I could keep playing. So I did, I played at uh, under 13, so I went and played first grade women. I'd done, I think it was two seasons there and then eventually I went over to the Institute of Sport. You know, which was at up at Parkley and, and the programs were running out of there. But you know, in terms of as a young girl, the opportunities now for young females are just endless. You know, there's so many uh, teams that you can play for. There's so many different levels. You can play park, you can play social, you can play a summer soccer competition. Um, but yeah, back then it was a massive challenge for a young girl, and it was also um, a massive hurdle for myself coming from an Italian background. For many years, my mother didn't want me to play football. You know, I was told that it, it wasn't for females. You know, where my dad didn't care, he just wanted all his kids to play. He was passionate about the game. And then eventually, at, at 10 years old, um, I actually trained for the first year, didn't play. And at 10, she, we finally went behind her back and went and signed up myself up for, <laughs> for Marconi in the boys team. So, yeah, there was obviously a lot of hurdles back then. And, you know, these days for young females, the opportunities are endless. And it's really, really good to see so many different cultures and people um, aspiring to be uh, footballers. Yeah, it's good. And I think you only have to look now at the the crowds and the broadcasting for the W League. There's a game every week now, I think. Um, I think it's uh, the 11th season of the W League, isn't it? Which yeah, is great it's as well. Massive. And it's um, yeah, big crowds for the Matildas. But I did see something where I thought it was a little bit, um, not a little bit, but a massive gap and something that needs to be addressed um, with FIFA. I think for the, for the Men's World Cup, it was something like 400 million for the winning team and um, for the women it's 30 million and that's that's a massive gap and even for funding um, for the Matildas to go and prepare for their World Cup um, it's a lot less um, than what what the men get so does that mean that it's easier for women to prepare or you know what I mean like yeah. it's not it's and not it's right it's against what FIFA and everyone speak about yet the numbers don't show up. Yeah, look, uh, the whole world speaks about equality now, you know, and um, we need major organisations like FIFA to start um, leading the way um, in, in these situations and in these, uh, it's, it's a problem obviously all over the world, whether it's a gender pay gap, um, whether it's a footballing issue, it's, it's a whole world issue at the moment that we're, we're struggling with at the moment. Um, but we need to be really, really uh, mindful that, you know, we need, the younger generation to start aspiring towards wanting to be an elite footballer or, or an elite athlete. And it's really important for people like FIFA to start showing equality in the game and you know showing the equal, the equal pay rights, um, equal uh, money for if you win a World Cup. You know, what's the difference between a female and a male? We all prepare, we all train the same, we all do the exact same things to be an elite footballer. You know, I'm sure there's just as many girls out there that do what Christian, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo does. You know, so we need to, um, you know, as a sport, need to be able to give young aspiring children, whether it's boys or girls, the opportunity to become uh, full-time athletes or full-time footballers. I think it's really, really important. Um, these days you see a lot of young kids, uh, they get lost along the way. Um, obviously the, the big hype around social media and uh, online games, there's so many kids that aren't getting out and being active. So we are the role models and as um, elite athletes we need to give young kids something to aspire towards because there's definitely an opportunity there for so many young Australian um, children. Yeah. And I, I've just picked up on something you said in there about how girls have to prepare just like the boys do. 
um, for major tournaments, things like that. And then there's another side of it, like you know, what you need to sacrifice to achieve anything, to be a professional, to be a CEO, whatever it might be, everyone has to sacrifice as well. I know for me, it was probably more of a social social life um, to, to be able to play football and, and play for Australia. Yeah, I had to give up weddings and um, 21st at the younger age and as I got older they turned into weddings and 30th and everything else. But to be honest, I was happy, happy to miss that anyway. But, um, but well, I don't know, for someone like yourself, what kind of things did you have to sacrifice? Yeah, look, uh, my sacrifices were the same, you know. I used to have my friends always write me messages saying, oh yeah, don't even reply, we know, I can't, you have soccer. Um, and when I actually retired from the game, everybody was really happy, They're like, yes, we've got our weekends back, we can start organising weekends away, you're not going to miss things. And I think it lasted about six months that I wasn't involved in football. And I just got so bored at home, you know, growing up playing and training, you know, pretty much every night of the week. I, I knew that I wanted to be back in, involved in some, in some way. Um, and lucky for me, I went and spoke to our local association, Southern Districts, and they gave me an opportunity to work within the women's program. But the sacrifices are the same, you know, weddings, birthdays, um, so many family functions that I've, that I've missed, uh, nieces and nephews' birthdays, you know, things that, that mean the world to me. But I wouldn't be the person that I am without football. Um, football has taught me so many um, life, life, um, experiences of I've learned uh, a lot of different things that I don't think I would have learned if I wasn't in football you know who knows where my life could have went also you know we put us straight to, to different ways um, but with football it just kept me grounded it keeps you humble um, gives you discipline you know and you make lifelong friends that in the long run you know they're memories that you're gonna have forever yeah, for sure that's probably the main one isn't it the the nieces the nephews and missing out on the you know the closer family kind of moments but I guess the the other side of what you get with your your teammates and um, the ones that you remember for your life and that your friends with for life it's really good but I guess I don't know the last thing would be um, around team sport and just a from a personal perspective because I know myself if I look back on my career if I could give myself some kind of advice um, one thing I've learned as I've got older is probably just to, to be the bigger person and sometimes just to walk away from certain things or, and not react um, on the pitch or off it, um, which is something I've learned a lot. Um, is there anything for yourself where, where you'd look back on your career and um, think, oh, what, what kind of um, advice could I give to my younger self? Yeah, of course. I always. Um you know, it's something that I think about all the time, you know, I always replay my career and I didn't have a very, um, you know, colourful career in terms of I got to play for Australia, but it was the second time round where I played for the Matildas and actually capped properly. Um, I went through a, a generation where Australian football for the women's, um, you know, we're wearing jerseys that are four times too big for us, you know, where now if I look back at um, what we had compared to where they're at now, it's just an unbelievable uh, spot where the game's going. But, you know, I, I think back to what I could have done better. You know, could I have done things differently? Um, and now I think that I hold myself as a, as a mentor to all the girls, not only within our um, Wanderers team, but I'm, I'm out there to help any kid, whether it's from grassroots all the way through to a professional um, Matilda, where they can learn from the mistakes that I made. You know, um, you know, there's some small regret in terms of I should have played a lot more for Australia. I know I had the talent to do it, but in terms of um, where my head was at, in terms of having the balance of you know being still being a, a child and still being a kid um, and being involved in a in a senior environment um, and and not knowing how lucky you actually have it and how lucky you are every time you put on that green and gold jersey or whether you put on a Wanderers jersey and play in, in the A-League or the W-League. You know, we don't realise how lucky we actually are because there's so many people out there that would die to be an A-League, a W-League player or a Matilda or a Socceroo. But it's not until you get older that you actually realise how lucky you were that you actually got to achieve that goal.